Hello YouTubers, you're on an all new Action Reaction and today we're going to be talking about the greatest film ever made, Highlander. Because in the end, there can be only one. Highlander. It was released in 1986. It stars Christopher Lambert as Connor McCloud, Sean Connery as Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, Clancy Brown as the villain called the Kurgan, and Roxanne Hart as Brenda Wyatt. It is directed by Russell Mulcahy, and before this he directed music videos for Duran Duran and then a film called Razorback. It is written by Gregory Wyden, who wrote the original draft as a UCLA writing assignment. That writing assignment later on became the screenplay that made up Highlander. It starts out at Madison Square Garden, where the wrestlers, the Freebirds, are fighting. And there, Connor McCloud is in a parking garage, and it starts out with a sword fight. You find out that Connor McCloud is an immortal from the Highlands of Scotland, hence the title Highlander. Pretty much, it's about few remaining immortals left during the time of the gathering where they must meet in New York City and fight to the death until one of them is left to win this thing called the prize. And throughout the film you learn about Connor McCloud and how the immortal world works. Nobody knows immortals are among us. And Brenda Wyatt is a love interest slash uh, forensic specialist that is interested in Connor McCloud and suspects that there's something else uh, to this guy. It is during this time we have the Kurgan, played by Clancy Brown, come in and he's fighting off other immortals. He wants Connor McCloud's head and we don't know why. And throughout the film we get flashbacks. And you find out Connor McCloud is from the Highlands of Scotland. In a battle he met the Kurgan for the first time, got stabbed, but then died. But then he didn't stay dead. Everybody thought he was in league with Lucifer, so he was banished from his village in Glenfern in Scotland. And this is where he meets his uh, first wife, Heather. He has a life with her, and during this, he's just a regular person until Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, a Spaniard Egyptian, played by Sean Connery, finds him and tells him that he's an immortal and that he's basically in this thing called the game where he must fight other immortals until the time of the gathering, and he has to win the prize, or else, if it ends up in the Kurgan's hands, ultimate evil would take over this world. So. He really wants Connor McCloud to defeat the Kurgan and be ready to be the final one. And he's kind of like his mentor character. He's kind of like the Obi-Wan Kenobi character in this. So we get glimpses of Connor McCloud's life through flashbacks. And they're done so well. Russell McKay he has so... You could, you could really tell Russell McKay he's uh, background in music videos and the transitions, whether it be like him thinking about a time at the lake and it's going through the aquarium. Having him drive away and it go through his eye then to Glenfern in Scotland the transitions are phenomenal in this, and very unconventional to other films. And it's very stylized in that regard. It's pretty much like a music video with a strong story. And anyway, he must battle the Kurgan. So you get to learn glimpses of Connor McCloud's life, and he must defeat the ultimate evil. And they're only safe on holy ground. So anywhere else that's not holy ground, like a church or graveyard, well, it's fair game. It is a great plot, and I'm really summarizing here, but, uh, as far as what I think makes it a good action movie, again, it has a great story, but you have Bob Anderson. He does the fight choreography for the sword fights. Now, he did fight choreography for The Mask of Zorro, Lord of the Rings, Princess Bride, and The Empire Strikes Back. And you could tell the, the sword fights in this are very well choreographed. They have style to them, the way they're shot. Everything about it is just really awesome. And for that, I think it's an underrated action movie. Now, Highlander is the epitome, the, the very definition of a cult classic. This did not do well in the United States when it first came out. It had a horrible poster that was black and white. Like, they did not market it very well. And it didn't do as well. It was until later on years in the sequels that it got more recognition than Highlander had a cult following. But it's good enough to spawn four sequels and it also had a television series that lasted six seasons as well as a spin-off that lasted a season and an anime. So Highlander really has quite a legacy but again in the end there could be only one. And I think a lot of the success has to do with the unconventional casting. You really uh, find Connor McCloud relatable. You feel his pain. I think that's what makes it so great compared to the sequels, that it's not about just the action. It has a great story, but not only that, the premise is interesting, but we, in this Highlander, 
you get to experience what it's like to be an immortal. You get to experience the tragedy and pain that goes with it. And that adds to more of the motivations of what makes up the character of Connor McCloud. And Christopher Lambert, he did not know that much English when this came out. So this is one of his early uh, English-speaking roles. He did this right after Greystoke, uh, Legend of Tarzan. So he really did sound like he was from lots of different places. And I, I love it. It really adds to it. And then Sean Connery being an actual Scottish guy as a spade or Egyptian. I mean, when you just hear that, you don't think it's going to work, but when you see the movie, it actually surprisingly works. And I just love it. I, I love this film, and I love the chemistry they have, and also, he has charisma. And it's nice seeing Sean Connery in this in some small way, because it gives the film a level of gravitas. Uh, and uh, you also have Roxanne Hart as Brenda White. I think she does a great job. She's a great love interest for Connor McCloud. And then Clancy Brown as the Kurgan. Yes, the voice of Lex Luthor from Superman the Animated Series, Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants. He does a phenomenal job. And it's crazy because he had uh, allergies to the makeup, so they had to apply it uh, a little bit. And I'm surprised that he got the performance out. You can tell he really used that... Uh, to his benefit, even though it may have hindered him with the allergies and the way the makeup was made. But uh, he is just larger than life. I mean, he has that line where it's just like, it's better to burn out than to fade away. I just love that. And he is just a sinister villain. But he's one of those villains who's evil, but you don't entirely hate. You can understand why people hate him, but there's just something about him you love as a villain. Like, he just relishes it and... I don't know, he's a perfect villain. Every other villain in the Highlander sequels have always tried to imitate Clancy Brown, but he really creates an interesting, unique performance that really defines him as one of the greatest movie villains of all time. And he's the exact opposite of Connor McCloud in like size, the way he speaks, his demeanor, the fighting, the swords, everything about him is a complete opposite. And it's very good seeing that contrast of good and evil play out. You also have John Polito in a very early role, and uh, yeah, I like the fight scenes, how they're set up with the transitions. Usually it would get lost, but the flashbacks really are meant to be uh, coincided with the present storyline. So, like, he would think of something that would have to do with the present, and I like that. And you also have his assistant. I like the World War II footage. I like how he was in London, kept getting stabbed on that one part. It's just a whole bunch of fun and tragedy of being an immortal. But who could forget the amazing soundtrack? Queen scored this movie, much like they did Flash Gordon. They were just going to write one song, and then they saw the movie footage, and they were inspired to create Who Wants to Live Forever during the Heather montage. And that is one of the saddest, most tragic scenes ever in cinema. If you watch that scene, it's just sad how he sees his first wife age and eventually die. He outlives his first wife. He looks the same and she's like an old woman. It is very tragic. And that is the point where Connor McCloud really becomes the Connor McCloud we know in the present day. Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, Sean Connery's character, warned him. And she's like, let her go. I had a wife one time in Japan and she died. It's not, you're not going to be the same. And he was trying to save him that pain, but I think Christopher Lambert as Connor McCloud needed that pain as a character to move forward. And, and then with that fight with Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez against the Kurgan on the tower was just really intense, very well done, very old-fashioned, almost swashbuckling type Errol Flynn stuff. But uh, you really get to see what makes the character, and this is just an isolated story. It ties up everything to that climatic final battle when it's just the Kurgan and Connor McCloud left. And I love it. And besides Who Wants to Live Forever, you also have Give Me the Prize, A Kind of Magic, Princes of the Universe. Who could forget Princes of the Universe? Here we are, born to be kings. We're the princes of the universe. I mean, it's just an awesome song by Queen. Uh, it was in the music videos, but yeah, they didn't have uh, an actual soundtrack, so you could find the actual music portions. Oh, you also have Don't Lose Your Head by Queen, but you can find the music portions on a Kind of Magic album by Queen. But you can also find the instrumental scores for the original trilogy in a CD 3-pack, where it has all the scores for the first three Highlander films. I'd highly recommend checking them out if you're a fan of the soundtrack. But they just create such an amazing score, and I love it. I love their cover of Frank Sinatra's New York, New York, when the Kurgan's playing chicken, just trying to intimidate Brenda Wyatt. And again, Silver Cup Studios, that final fight, the lighting, everything is just awesome. And the sword play, and then the whole whoosh, 
and then it just goes up and it's just like there can be only one and then it's just like bush, 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 with the glass russell mckay really loves exploding glass you've seen it in the shadow highlander 2 so many other films so yeah as an action movie i think this is a very well done action film uh it is amazing. After 30 years, this film really holds up, and I think it's because it's really timeless. It's an 80s film, has an 80s soundtrack, but it's different from other films in that decade. And the story's so strong, and the fact that you go through different periods of time, and him being immortal, the tale, the love story, the tragic, the action, everything about it feels timeless. You could watch it in any time, and it still feels the same. And because of that, I give Highlander a 5 out of 5, a 10 out of 10, and an A+. Highlander is just a phenomenal action movie, and I highly recommend it if you have not seen it. If you have seen Highlander, let me know what you think in the comments below. What is your favorite Highlander? Ultimately, it has great performances. The cinematography and soundtrack are phenomenal. Russell McKay, he really proved himself as a director, and you really get to see his talent from directing music videos and applying it to a motion picture film. And Gregory Ryden just wrote a terrific script, an interesting premise that you could probably explore more, that the television series explored more, but for what came out, it was very, very well done. And it was originally supposed to be a lot darker. It made it more action-based, so it's not that bad. And again, Sean Connery. This is the first role. Sean Connery as Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez is the only role he played twice after James Bond 007. So that says something. And uh, him and Christopher Lambert became great friends. And you really get to see what type of actor Christopher Lambert later on became as far as like action and stuff he has that charisma that uh, that uh iconic laugh it's like hey it's kind of magic and ultimately you have a really very well done hero that you could root for and again a great soundtrack great romance story and the action just everything about this movie is just pure awesomeness so i give it a perfect score my reaction to it it's the greatest film ever made like they said in talladega nights highlander is phenomenal and other movies and sequels have tried to basically imitate the original film, but Highlander's film series is ultimately what the catchphrase is. There's other movies that are like this, but in the end, there can be only one Highlander. Yep, that is it for Action Reaction today. If you like this video, feel free to click the like button, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out my other videos. And on my channel here, I have a video from last year I did for the El Rey Network where I talk a little bit more about my favorite moments from Highlander. You can check out stuff I didn't go over in this review. But I just wanted to go a little bit more in depth with the story and everything else that I did it in that other video. So it'd be in the link below and in the comments. So check that video out. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. And again, let me know, what did you think of Highlander? And if not, Go see Highlander, it's one of the greatest films ever made.